Hey guys, I wanted to make a video tutorial on how I make video tutorials for my kids. Um, and this is especially helpful if you teach math, I think, more than anything else. But I've tried making these for science and social studies before as well. Um, so I do think it works for just about anything. Um, and I'll show you exactly why I make these in just a second. See, there was a time uh, I got this email, which actually was almost exactly like this word for word. Uh, but it just basically said, my child's trying to do his math homework, but he doesn't know how to divide. And my husband and I want to help him, but I don't know what strategy you're using in class. So how can we explain it to him so that it matches what you're using in class? Which is awesome of the parent to actually care enough to help their kid. But um, to be perfectly honest, at this point, we had been doing this for three weeks. So I was a little frustrated. Which is why I send back an email that looked kind of like this. Hey, I can see your child's confused. We've only been covering division for the last month. No wonder he's still having trouble. Clearly he's been working super hard in class. Or at least I wanted to send that email back. I didn't really send that one back. What I did send back looked more like this. The strategy we've been using in class is a pictorial model using circles to represent our divisor. The, so if the question asked 288 divided by 4, you would draw 4 circles. Then we would count out the dividend, the amount we're dividing, or the 288 from before, between the 4 circles. We try to speed up the process by skip counting at first, put groups of 10, 50, or 100 in each circle at first, and then count by 1s when you have no other option. We have also explored a modified version of long division that relies on this same principle as well as some guessing and checking. Um, I know I wrote that, but that is not helpful at all. So I think what would be easier is to send something like this. Hey, check the class Edmodo page. I uploaded a video about how to divide as a reminder to help any students who need it. I'm not calling out the kids for being stupid. We're not telling the mom what to do because she's not going to understand it in email anyway. Um, but I wanted to show you guys how I would put together this video because it is really easy to do. So like uh, you may have noticed from the title screen, I do all of these on my iPad. Um, and I have a bunch of apps to help me make videos, but the two that are good for making tutorials are really these two. There's Doodlecast, which is what I actually use and I'm using right now. And then there's this app called Show Me. Um, and the reason why I have both of them is that first, my school has this on all of their iPads. Uh, and they have that on all the iPads because Show Me is free, which is kind of nice. Um, and I do think the pen work on Show Me is a little bit neater, but um, there are some problems with Show Me too. First off, it's really difficult to actually share the videos that you make. Um, and there is a way to save it, but it costs $3. And because I only downloaded that app because it was on the school iPads, I, I didn't actually do that. And you need to set up a Show Me account, and it goes to the whole Show Me community, and then the Show Me community turns into like its own amateur Khan Academy, and it's awkward and awful and whatever. So what I actually use all the time is Doodlecast. And like I said, Show Me is free. Doodlecast costs $5, which is ridiculous. I think I downloaded it when it was free, so I'm not sure why it costs $5 now, except for the fact that it's awesome. And part of what makes it awesome is this. Um, this is a screenshot of what a um, page on Doodlecast looks like. Um, and so you can see there's all of this stuff up here, which is kind of just managerial stuff. That's your button to go back to the main menu and how to save and export and play it back to you. There, of course, is the record button for when you want to talk about things. Uh, down here are all of your pen tools and things to change the background and stuff like that if you want to do colors like that. But what I think makes Doodlecast so awesome are all of these backgrounds over here um, because you don't get this on Show Me. And this is really good because if you do teach math, they have things like they have graphs and they have grids and um, they even have things like um, down at the bottom there's a background that's just for if you're trying to plot out um, scenery for a stage show. Like there's a diagram of what a stage looks like so you can do your light plot or whatever. Um, there's different sport layouts if you're a coach and you want to do plays, things like that. So this is actually really cool for that sort of thing. Um, 
but for the sake of what we're doing, I, I wanted to show you how I would lay out a normal video for my kids. So this is going to take a second, but I think it's worth watching. Okay, so you start with this blank background, and if I'm doing my vision tutorial video that I'm doing, I'm going to start by finding my background. So in this case, uh, the background that I want is going to be this notebook background. And I'm going to write really quickly before I start recording anything for them. I'm going to write division. And then I might want a quick reminder of what division is. So I might write something like um, breaking things into equal groups. Um, and then actually I'm going to do this down here where I'm going to write, let's see, blue. I'm going to do 8 divided by 2 is 4. And I'm going to draw 8 things down here, which is going to come in handy when I actually pretend to record this for my kids. Um, and then I'd leave it like this, and then I might go to my next page. And on here I am going to write that problem that I put in that email to that parent before. So what was it? 288 divided by 4 equals what? Okay. So now I'm ready to record. So I'm going to go back to my page from before. And I would start by saying, Hey guys, some of you may be having problems with your division. Uh, in case you are, remember that division is just breaking things into equal groups, which means that we need to have the same amount in each group. So if I'm looking at 8 divided by 2 is 4, here are my 8 different things. They need to be two equal groups of 4. I can't have one group of 5 and then one group of 3. I can't have a group of 1 and 7. Two equal groups. So if this is my sample problem of 288 divided by 4, let's face some facts here in real life, I would have a background like that. Okay. So if I'm doing 288 divided by 4, remember the method that we use in class all the time is to draw our circles. So since we are dividing by 4, I need to have 4 circles and draw out the circles for them. Da -da -da. And then I would literally walk through this whole problem. So in this case, if I'm doing 288 divided by 4, bear with me for a second, I would do, okay, so 50, 50, 50. 50. So 50, 100, 150, 200, 210, 220, 230, 240, 250, 260, 270, 280, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88. Okay, and then I would count up each circle and say uh, each circle is 72, so 288 divided by 4 is 72. Great, whatever. Math teachers, you can double check me, that's fine. But then I always make sure to say, oh, um, now that we've kind of covered that, why don't you try this one on your own? And I would do, I don't know, 532 divided by 7, because I'm feeling mean. And hopefully the kids get that, and, you know, I'd give them a second to figure it out on their own. There was actually one time I sat here letting it record for 30 seconds in silence, and that was the most painful thing ever. So normally I will say... Try this one on your own. Uh, pause the video while you do the work. Because I'm not patient enough for it. But then I would go through the whole process again. And I could do the whole seven circles and whatever. Um, and do that along with them. Or I might do the other method I talked about before and do 532 divided by 7. And this is awesome. Um, well, some of you might be going, that's great, Pablo, but why wouldn't you just go to Khan Academy and look up a division thing there? The truth is that if you're the one who's doing it first, it's more personal. And that allows you to do things like, remember, this is our house method. We say there are 532 people inside the house, and there are seven zombies coming into the house. So our quotient is going to be the number that of people who escaped to the roof of the house instead of being eaten by zombies. So let's see. At first, the seven zombies each take out uh, 50 people, or whatever. So seven times 50 would be 350, right? Please don't let me make a mistake on here. I'd feel really bad about it. Subtract. So 2. Borrow from here. Make this a 4. Make this 13. 13 minus 5 is going to be 8. 
One, I have 182 people left inside the building. Or seven zombies go after 20 more people. Seven times 20 is 140. Subtract. 42. Well, seven divided by... Or 42 divided by seven ugh, is six. So I have 76 people who escaped to the roof. Double check by multiplying. You know how to do it. Okay, great. So now that my video is done, this is where things get complicated. So I brought us back to this page really quickly. Now that I'm done with my video, um, I need to share it because if I have it, it's kind of useless if the kids can't see it. So that means that we're going to need to go up to this button here because when you go to that button there, what it's going to show you looks kind of like this. So um, from here, this is our option to share our video with whoever we want to. And the best way to share it is always, I always send it straight to the photos folder on my iPad. You can send it directly to YouTube or Dropbox, but uh, I like having it on my iPad instead. And you can always go back to this anyway. Um, that same button that was up here brings you back to the menu with all of your different um, videos that you've made before. So you can always get back in this and share it however you want to. But first I'd send it to the photos thing. And look, at least there are two of my older videos. This video obviously isn't in there yet because I'm not done recording it. Um, but once they're in there, I always throw my things up on YouTube first. I have my own little YouTube channel of these videos I made. They're not great, but it's a good place to keep them. Um, and it's good because some parents will complain they can't get onto Edmodo or something. And you go, well, they're on YouTube. Can you get on YouTube? And they go, yeah, I guess I can get on YouTube. Um, and you know there's that. Um, but once they're on here, upload them to YouTube, then put them on Edmodo or your class website or wherever you're gonna put them. Um, but I'd put them on a website that the kids can access from school. So even though the kids can't access YouTube, they can access the Edmodo page, uh, which can play the videos, which is always good. Um, and then always end your video with something saying how your kids can ask you for help if they need help on it. So so if you have any questions, I would love to answer them for you. Um, you know how to reach me on Tumblr, pablophonic.tumblr.com slash ask, um, and I'll get back to you pretty quickly. Um, otherwise, I hope you guys like this, and I will talk to you later. Made with DoodleCast Pro. Yeah, I forgot to warn you guys. At the end of all these DoodleCast videos, they always put this little, this was made using DoodleCast Pro which is super annoying, which is why if you have uh, your iPad and you do save it to the photos section like I told you to, it gives you the option to trim down your videos, which means you can trim out that annoying last five seconds or whatever it is, which yes, means I totally could have trimmed out that last five seconds, but I wanted to warn you about this so you'd know about it for the future. Now for serious. Um, hit me up if you have any questions. Okay, bye.